in this lecture we are going to discuss about scalar products. Before we discuss scalar products, let us discuss briefly about vector multiplication. Two vectors can multiply in two different ways and these are dot product also called as scalar product and which is defined as a vector dot b vector. So we represent the dot product by placing a dot between the two vectors. And the other way is cross product also called as vector product represented as a cross b. So we represent the cross product by placing a cross between the two vectors a and b. The dot product is also called as scalar product because the result of this product gives us a scalar quantity. Whereas the cost product is also called as vector product because the result of this multiplication gives us a vector quantity. We will in this lecture focus on the dot or scalar product. Dot product of two vectors a and b is defined as the product of their magnitude with the cosine of the angles between them. Thus, a dot b vector is equal to a into b into cos theta, where a is the magnitude of a, b is the magnitude of b and theta is the angle between the two vectors. First and foremost, what is the need to define the dot product the way we do? That is, why is the dot product is defined in this particular way as a dot b equal to a into b into cos theta? Why not a dot b is defined as a into b into sin theta? Or why not a dot b is defined as a into b into tan theta? Or for that matter, by any other definition? The reason we do so is because there are many physical quantities which can be represented by a b into cos theta. For example, the work done by a force producing a displacement. So let us say this is a block and on this block a force F is acting. Because of this force, the block moves on the ground and it gets displaced by a vector S. Angle between force and displacement is this angle theta. We will learn in future classes that the work done by this force will be defined as work done equal to F S into cos theta where theta is the angle between F and S and F and S are magnitude of force and displacement respectively. Similarly, the power transmitted by a force to a body moving with velocity V. So this is the body on which a force F is acting and it is moving with the velocity v. The force is doing work on this body and the rate at which it is doing work that is the power that is transmitted by the force to this body will be defined as p equal to f v into cos theta where theta is the angle between f and v. Further, the volume rate of flow of a liquid through an area at which the velocity of liquid is v. Thus, this is the area A. And from this area, let us say water is passing by with a velocity v. So, we can see water is passing through this area with velocity v. And we want to find the volume rate of flow of water from this area. That is, how many meter cube of water is passing per second. The volume rate of flow is also called as volume flux and it will be equal to V A into cos theta where V is the velocity, A is the area and theta is the angle between V and A. Thus, defining dot product as A dot B equal to A B cos theta will give us a useful notation which can be used to represent very conveniently many physical quantities. For example, the wave work then is defined W is equal to F S into cos theta can be represented simply as F dot S because F dot S is also equal to F S cos theta. Similarly, power is given by F V cos theta can be conveniently represented as f dot v because the way we have defined dot product f dot v will be equal to f v cos theta. Similarly, 
the volume flux or the volume rate of flow through and cross section area A through which water is passing by is defined as VA cos theta which can be very conveniently written as A dot V because we know that A dot V will be equal to A into V into cos theta. 